All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm gonna have to re-record this. Uh, the GoPro overheated. Uh, my plan for uh, field day 2021 was to have the heat be an X factor, but try to do it as smart as I could. So I'm out here in the Sonoran Desert. Um, I'm about three miles or 3.15 miles into my journey and uh, about uh, ooh, an hour and 30 minutes into it. And yeah, the GoPro died. Uh, I didn't think the temperature was that hot. When I left, it was about 100 degrees flat. And uh, right now, I think it's probably about 100, 101, uh, maybe in the high 90s. So it died. So I'm re-recording my intro. Uh, so I lost some footage, I think, at the beginning. But uh, yeah, the plan was to have the X Factor be the heat out here in the Sonoran Desert. So I left around 4.45 p.m. local time. And uh, right now it is, it's 6.10 p.m. local time. And I gotta tell you, um, while that helped a little bit, this was probably one of my most strenuous hikes so far out here in the Sonoran Desert. Um, I have my pack here. This is the Eberly Stock Fact Track, and it is loaded up. It even has a few convenience items, which I wish I had left. And uh, dry, weight, dry weight, it came in at uh, 41 pounds. I added eight liters of water across five water bottles and a three liter uh, hydration bladder and that added another 17 and a half pounds. And I reweighed myself and it came in at about 58 and a half pounds. So the pack was killing me. My heart rate was uh, elevated almost like I was trail running, um, even though I was only moving about 2.3 miles per hour. So the plan was to go on top of that peak up there. But uh, honestly, guys, I'm a bit winded after uh, this first uh, a little over three miles in the weight. So I'm gonna camp uh, probably about another quarter mile from here. And uh, if I'm not able to do VHF to send out my wife a APRS text message, um, I may have to do a quick rock scramble to the top to do that. But uh, so far I'm safe. I only had uh, really two issues so far. Uh, the first was the hydration bladder in uh, this pack here. On the side is a three liter mil spec camelback. And the problem was that it was pretty difficult to uh, get in there fully loaded. So if you decide to go with the Everly Stock Fact Track and a three liter uh, hydration pouch, just make sure it's wide enough to fit. I had a hard time. And the second issue I ran into was with the um, MCOM tools. Made an error in how I created the offline search index for the database for the, doing the call lookups. And I found that a few people like Tango Oscar Mike and my buddy Robert with curated.com uh, their first names weren't coming up and what I found was that other people had those calls and long story short I forgot to filter by the active licensees only and after I made that change the call database dropped from like 1.5 million records down to like 800,000 plus and cut the size of the binary index from 50 megabytes down to 32 megabytes so I solved that problem um, I'm actually kind of concerned whether my Pi is going to overheat, given that the GoPro already overheated. All right, guys, uh, sun's poking through again. I have about an hour and a half before sunset, so I'm going to make it to camp, and I'll join you guys again. This is going to be a long video um, if the footage survives, so hopefully you guys will stick around. Um, it's a lot of fun coming out here and doing my wacky experiments for you guys. All right, guys, it's about 6.45 p.m. local time. I have just dropped my pack, and before I do anything, I decided just to uh, deploy my little uh, air light camping chair and send an APR message to my wife. So this is the Yaesu FT818ND in my man pack. I have my Raspberry Pi connected with GPS dongle, and I'll show it up on the screen here, uh, but I was able to get uh, my MCOM tools to be able to switch modes to APRS after the Pi started up and I was able to send a message to my wife using my pre-canned templates. And uh, based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like I received uh, an acknowledgement back from uh, SMS gate. So she knows I'm okay. So that was my number one goal was to test my ability to get into an eye gate. And uh, it's either just south uh, east of me or it's all the way down uh, in the white tanks down in the, uh, the West Valley. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and set up my tent. Um, there's very little sun right now. The temperatures dropped down to the mid-90s, so I don't need to set up my tarp shelter tonight. Uh, once I get the shelter up, I'm going to go ahead and deploy my uh, my dipole. I brought the link dipole from Pactena. 
Um, I don't know if I'm going to put the 80 meter links on it, but we'll see. It could be good for uh, this time of day or evening. All right, see you guys in a bit. Uh, really quickly, guys, so awesome. I told my wife how to respond. So you hams who are trying to use uh, SMS gate, make sure you show them. Um, I'll throw it up on the screen, but she also replied. You can see there at the bottom, it says SMS gate to KT1RUN2 at wife. Got it. Enjoy. So we have successfully, without the internet, without any type of infrastructure, just uh, my radio, well, on my side, no infrastructure, I was able to have bidirectional communication. And this is what I think emergency communications is all about. Um, I know it's a lot bigger than that, but for me, being able to do this kind of stuff without cell and internet access is just blowing my mind. All right, time to set up the tent and uh, the, the antenna, I guess, and get on HF. All right, guys, it's a little dark, so I do apologize. It is 7.53 local time. The sun set about, uh, oh, nine minutes ago. And uh, this is what I have to work with. Um, there's not much to look at. Uh, didn't do a great job guying out my uh, soda beams carbon six carbon fiber mast. In fact, I only have the Pactena up about eight and a half feet. Going out with the 20 uh, meter and the 40 meter um, elements to that trekking pole. And then I have one going out this way. I also have a really small camp here set up. I uh, have the tungsten, I think it's the ultralight tent. I've had this for a few years and uh, didn't put the rain fly on because I don't think it's going to rain. I have the quilt in there. And then really it's just my uh, man pack here and my pack. Again, uh, that fire uh, pit and that ring is not mine. So uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm not really too hopeful uh, on Windlink. Uh, certainly not going to do any no contest contesting, but uh, really it's just for me to get out here and hang out. So I survived the heat. So I'm gonna say that was a success. Um, it was rough, but yeah, I'll, I'll update you guys if uh, find out uh, if anything cool happens. All right, see you in a bit. All right guys, it's the tech prepper, sorry. Um, it's way past sunset and all I have is this little streamlight lantern. We're actually doing an active wind link connection right now into Bakersfield, California. We're about 68% of the way of sending our field test message. I've got a queue of three other messages or two other actually to send out. And it looks like a whole bunch of people try to send me messages. So we'll see how many come through. Um, this was my second attempt. I had really good luck into a, a station in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, but the band conditions just went crazy on me and it dropped. But uh, right now, it looks like we're almost at 90% here, so I'm hopefully hoping that the MCOM Tools email that I just put together goes through. And um, wish me luck, and I'll let you guys know if it all works out. Uh, we'll talk about it in the morning over breakfast, because this lighting can't be fun for the video. Morning, guys. It's about 5.15 local time, and uh, field day was a success, even though I didn't uh, no contest contest. Uh, instead, I came out here to do variety of tests with MCOM tools. My little um, field expedient digital communication system built on top of a Raspberry Pi and it was really successful. So I was able last night when I first got here to be able to tune the radio to the APRS uh, nationwide frequency uh, 144.390, turn on the Pi and just with a little uh, whip antenna on top was able to get into uh, an eye gate and using MCOM tools, I was able to send a SMS gate text message to my wife, letting her know that I arrived and that I was safe. Before I left the house, I also showed her how to respond. Um, and uh, she was able to send me back a message. So two-way communication. On my end, I had no cell or internet. Uh, so really great success there. Um, after that, I was able to switch using MCOM tools from the APRS mode back to Winlink mode. It took me two attempts on 40 meters to uh, get or send and receive my messages. Uh, I had good luck the first time getting into a station in uh, Colorado Springs. And for some reason, the band conditions just died on me. Uh, quickly switched over to a station in Bakersfield, California. And I was able to send out three uh, emails, uh, one which was the field day status, on that note, I think I sent about 25 emails out uh, for people requesting to be on my list. There were a handful of people that said they were on QRZ and they were, but I wasn't able to pull your email. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, it was a good portion. So it may be a bug with uh, QRZ. So I sent that uh, email message out. Uh, the templating engine worked. It was nice and frictionless. I basically 
Um, did I edited the the message a little bit, but I didn't have to worry about adding you know 25, 30 people to the thread and uh, putting the GPS and all the other uh, bits of information in there. So that all just worked. Um, so that was a success. Um, it was also nice to be able to test the offline uh, call lookups. And uh, I was just listening mostly on 40 meters and uh, taking people's call signs as they were coming in and just seeing where they were located. So last night, I think on 40, uh, I was getting a lot of the, the western portion of the country. So California, uh, Washington. Um, right now, I seem to be getting into Texas quite a bit. So that all worked. And then the fourth thing that I really liked about MCOM tools that has fully kept me from ever logging into my Pi through VNC was the ability to shut it down. So really quite nice. I think I'm going to try one more WinLink session this morning. Um, in terms of batteries, uh, I'm still running on my same 4.5 amp hour battery that was driving both the Raspberry Pi and the uh, 818. Um, so yeah, like I said, mostly listening. I tried to have a QSO last night with um, Jose out in California. He's one of my uh, soda buddies. Zero six, Hotel Zulu Radio, do you copy? Roger, Roger, Kilo 6, Hotel Zulu, Romeo, you are 5959. I'm operating station 1B in Alpha Zulu, do you copy? Oh, one, Romeo, uniform, November, this is Kilo 6, Hotel Zulu, radio, do you copy? Roger, Roger, this is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo, uniform, November. And I could hear him 59, he was no problem. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think I had enough power and I'm still in a little canyon since I didn't do the trek all the way to the top of the peak like I wanted. Um, in terms of the heat, it was not a problem. Uh, it cooled off to, I think, about like 81 and uh, had a really good night's sleep. And uh, I haven't even had to deploy the tarp shelter. Um, I'll be packing up after this, so no need to do that either. Um, did have some issues with the uh, HF antenna over here. Uh, I changed up my guy system at the last minute and I didn't have my tot line hitches on there and I just kind of rigged something up so I want to make sure I have all my knots ready to go next time. Um, in the tent it was actually kind of cool. Uh, I've been experimenting with a lantern from Streamlight. I think it's the Siege USB X or X USB, something like that. And I bought it because it has three different modes. Uh, I can run it as a red lamp, which I ran most of the night last night. Um, a no standard uh, like white light at various uh, lumens and also as a flashlight. And it also takes a rechargeable uh, 18650 cell. So since I standardize mostly on CR132 batteries uh, with my O-lights and my stream lights, it just seemed great to have that interoperability. And it ran cool to the touch all night last night. And having that nice red light didn't... Uh, cause me any problems with night vision um other than that i have slightly over three miles to uh, head back home uh, so i think i'm going to have some more coffee here actually i need a sip but for me this was really about um surviving the heat and really testing mcom tools and not really participating too much in the field day activities uh, i think next year i'll have to bring a, a qro rig i'll bring my 857 but I have to tell you, the weight did kill me. Um, I, I really mentally thought that I would have no problem with 60 pounds. And just given the fact it was 100 degrees during my entire hike yesterday, um, even though I left at 4.45 p.m., uh, it was rough. So I'm going to have to figure out where I can cut weight. I think if I do this again, I've got a few um, pieces that I can cut. But before I sign off, let me show you my current uh, setup here. So way over there, we have a trekking pole that has the uh, leg of my uh, 20 and well 20 and 40 meter uh, elements for my dipole. Um, I'm running the Soda Beams Carbon 6 Carbon Fiber Mast. And as I told you last night, I believe, I decided to run my Pactena uh, link dipole at the same height that I normally do, which is about eight feet. And I had really great luck. And then it just goes off to this side. Again, that fire pit and fire was not mine. It was here already. And uh, yeah, that was basically the station I was working with here. Here's the 818 in my HF man pack. 
um, and then I have the Raspberry Pi connected and everything fits nicely in the 511 pouch and a little luxury item but I really enjoyed sitting in the um, REI Trek light chair all right guys uh, it's been fun but this has been a long video I think if all the footage survived um, at any rate be strong be safe and be prepared and uh, I reweighed myself. I came in like at 58 and a half pounds. So I'm dying a bit here. Uh, I usually consider myself to be in uh, pretty good shape, but uh, I'm struggling a little bit. So I think I'm gonna take this last mile a bit slower.